I'm Stacy from StacyStJohn.com. And I'm Valerie from QuillDecor.com. And we are here to help you better your BNB. This is our weekly show where we review one property's listing and interiors in 10 minutes or less. This is new. We're doing 10 minutes. Let's go, Stacy. Let's go. Let's start this timer. And we are reviewing Lizette's adorable property in Panama City Beach. Uh, Val, let's talk about the Fab Five photos first. What do yeah. you think? So Lizette, we love your property. Um, we love so many things about it. From the Fab Five, I think they're really great. I would change a couple of things. One is that backyard, which just is a little bit stark. It doesn't photograph well. I know that you're trying to be dog friendly and show people you have a yard. So maybe you want to disregard our opinions about that, um, which is understandable. I love that she has the garage and the amenities photographed. I'm not sure that the garage needs two in those Agreed. bad five. I might switch one of those out. What do you think? Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Um, I think two garage photos um, is the bit overkill just based on all the other great qualities about this property. I would actually swap it out for one of her um, photos, which we'll show in just a moment, which shows her proximity to the ocean. Yes. Good idea. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Let's zoom in and start looking at the pictures of this beautiful property. Lizette, you've done such a great job decorating it. I love all of your coastal blues, your many beautiful mm -hmm. pillows. It looks very well done, very inviting. This looks like a very, very nice house. Um, what is our takeaway number one, Stacey? Well, takeaway number one, we're actually going over to the bedroom and we are going to talk about going and getting a hotel style bed frame. So get a hotel style bed frame. And I'm going to show you in just a hot minute why this is important. Number one, do you see how this looks like maybe she's taken Lizette where I'm not sure what's going on with the foundation of the, the bed box spring. It looks that like maybe box. there's a low mm -hmm. profile box spring that's been wrapped with a sheet or something to make it not look so box springy because those aren't right. attractive. So I think I know what you were doing there. So Stacy, why does a hotel bed frame help us? Well, and why, why would you we want to invest in that? You can see underneath that I can see underneath the bed. Number one, cleaners sometimes have a tough time getting underneath the bed. And so it's a great way to collect dust bunnies and extra socks and crumbs. If our cleaners aren't paying close attention to underneath the bed, it is a bad review waiting to happen. Okay. So a hotel style bed frame is one that's a platform underneath. It does not allow things to get under the bed and therefore you can save yourself from the risk of a bad review by having not, okay. not giving it's people not the opportunity. It's not a real sexy picture, you guys, but this is it's what not. it basically is. And I can't even make it bigger, which is annoying. Um, so I'll zoom in on it there. It just makes it so, you know, when you're at the hotel, it's so that's, you know, your kid's favorite stuffy you can't get shoved under the bed and forgotten. So that's just the base of it. And then you put, you can put your box spring or, so you put your box spring on this, right? Stacey? Yep. Yep. And you use these in your beach properties. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So that is a good idea and something to consider. I would also say maybe add some rugs to the bedrooms. I know at a beach that can feel daunting because of the sand, but because of your distance from the beach, because you're not right on the beach, I would consider softening up the tile in these bedrooms with some rugs. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Key takeaway number two, Val, let's talk about scale and placement of okay. artwork. So scale and placement of artwork is our key takeaway, takeaway number two. So she's got some cute sayings on the wall here, serenity, tides, and good vibes. I love that. I also think it's almost floating like it's going to take off and float into the <laughs> sky and float away. So a designer rule is that you pull things right down more to eye level unless there is a reason for it to be that high. 
So if you're going to put something that high, that should be because there's something directly under it. So I don't know if that's even movable, Lisa, if it's not, maybe you could do a skinny console table here and some um, console table lamps on top of it. I love an excuse for another lamp in a room. So I know how you love your lamps, girl. I do love my lamps. And another thing about the scale of art is that you want to make sure things are working with the wall you put them on. Like, let's look here, for example. I love these little wood pieces, but they, they seem a little bit small for over there on their own by the TV. I would maybe mix those on a wall this size with another piece of art or put them like up closer to the TV. They just are a little bit weird floating out here on their own and a little bit small mm -hmm. to be on that portion of the wall. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. So just think a lot about the size and placement of your artwork. Um, if you want a rule, everyone loves a rule. A good rule of thumb is that you want the artwork to take up at least two thirds of the wall space that you're looking at. It doesn't have to necessarily, it's more about the balance. So as you stand back, think about if you've got a great big wall like this, maybe I would group something else, like put these two things closer together and then group a third object with them or something else to make it feel just a little bit more balanced with the wall. Interesting. I love a good rule, Val. Okay. That's great. I tried to do a rule. <laughs> okay. So the other thing, um, do we have a keep it up for this set? What is our keep it up? Well, we want to do that. We don't want to do that first. First, we want to do um, <laughs> another, <laughs> our third key takeaway. Sorry. On That's okay. We're going to go right. to the listing itself and talk a little bit about something Lisette asked for feedback on, which is her listing copy and description. Yeah. I would say my biggest takeaway here is to break out the bullets. Okay. Your listing description is very robust, which is fabulous. But what happens is when folks have paragraph after paragraph after paragraph to read, it can be difficult for them to want to stay engaged. So by utilizing bulleted points and sectioning it off room by room, you can help keep engagement from your potential guests and have them really, really actually understand in detail what is in your property for them to enjoy. So here's an example of one of my listings. We do obviously share information about the space and then just actually break it out room by room with a bulleted list of what is included with each room. Cool. Great example, Stacey. That is that is a really good way to do it because people don't read. They're not going to read. They'll be mm -hmm. more likely to read if it's bulleted out and easy to yep. consume. Yep. Um, and then what do you think about the title? I'm throwing that at you because we didn't talk about it. Um dog friendly golf cart three blocks from beach well the thing that i love about it is that it is very direct and to the point and it lists amenities so mm -hmm. that i'm if i'm seeing that i'm gonna dig in and i'm gonna really pay attention if i've got a dog if i want to be close to the beach so i actually love the title awesome okay all right let's talk about um keep, keep it up, up. Keep it up, Lisette. This is what we think you are doing super well. Well, I love that she has photographed key amenities for this property. And, you know, Lisette, you've got obviously the golf cart. You've got this adorable basketball court. You've got a love beautifully that. organized set of beach toys. I love that you have included these in your photos. It's so organized. I love how organized mm -hmm. this garage is and it's clean mm -hmm. and you've got matching mm -hmm. chairs. Mm -hmm. Like this is not an afterthought where you threw a bunch of leftover things. You clearly thought about the guest needs. You've got a cooler in here. I mean, this is yeah. set up for families to succeed here at the beach. And then I love how you even put them out front of the house <laughs> just so as, you know, maybe have a, have a drink before you get on the cart and then go to the beach. And then I love I would also use that in your fab five. That one. You would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I also love this. I love when beach yes. properties do this. Like, look, we've got mm -hmm. exact, this is where you're going. You're getting on your golf cart. And you're going to zoom right here. And there you are, bam, on the beach. Yep. Love that picture. 
So okay. awesome, awesome job, Lizette. And Val, we did it with just a few seconds to spare. All right. Thank you so much, Lisette, for submitting your listing. We really hope this was helpful. And if you want to apply to have your listing reviewed on the show, all you have to do is go to betteryourbnb.com and submit a super simple form. And if you are watching us on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe so you can get notified every time we post a new show. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you guys have enjoyed this. We sure have. And we'll see you next time. I'm Valerie Malone. And I'm Stacey St. John. Happy hosting. Bye for now.